Hey, morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's two of us. Good morning everyone. Great that you can join us live Sunday morning. We're in the conservatory, which, which can only mean one thing. Lockdown. <laughs> We're back for one week only though. We'll be back in church next week with a few people. But um, great that you're able to join us. Thank you for tuning in. I trust you keep me sane, safe, healthy and... Um, not going nuts with it all. Not going nuts with the whole yeah. thing either. Yeah. And, um, so Debbie, have you got your coffee? Have you get, grab yourself have. a cup of coffee. We're yeah. in a relaxed mood this morning. I have. I'm ready. You've got your coffee. I've got the coffee. Does that mean I've got to drink it too? You can drink it. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Pour it over yourself. Whatever. But, so grab yourself a cup of coffee. And talking of coffee, someone uh, lovely dropped off a t-shirt for me this week. And if you can see it, it says, Pastor, powered by coffee and the Holy Spirit. And I think that just sums up my job very well. So thank you to the person who dropped it off. Uh, and it fits perfectly as well, which was amazing. Yeah. And um, yes, coffee and the Holy Spirit. And we've got the coffee. We've got the Holy Spirit. Yep. You hopefully got some coffee and the Holy Spirit wherever you are. And um, we believe that God's going to come and touch us and um, okay. inspire us this morning through his power and through a bit of caffeine as well. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, we're back in the uh, back in the conservatory. And uh, today's short service just really sort of confirms the sort of chaotic and crazy time yeah. in which we're living. It's a bit manic at the moment. It is, and we just we want to encourage you all this morning. We know that life is very challenging for many of us, and uh, you know, for many who are at home on their own, we we recognise just how even more challenging it is. And it's really important to reach out to each other at these times. You know, this is why God gave us each other. So that, um, yeah, no, <laughs> really? they, they gave me okay. Steve, yes, what more do yes. I need? I've got Debbie, so, um, But, you know, it's really, really important that we, that we find joy in the middle of all these difficulties, so that we find a way to stay sane, that we connect with each other on a daily basis. And I want to thank those of you who join the Coffee Morning on Thursdays. And they're a real time of encouraging and uplifting, even when you don't feel like it. It's just a chance to reconnect with people that you can't physically see. Mm -hmm. And as we often say, you know, I, I can I can touch my pastor. Um, you guys can't, um, thankfully for that. Um, but you can pray for him and you can pray for us and you can pray for yourselves and for each other as well. Because this is a challenging, unprecedented time. Hey. Got that in. Um, but you know what? We have a hope and we have a joy. We have a joy where we can be joyous in God and in what he is doing in our lives. And. You know, there are so many different ways to look at this lockdown and, uh, and you know, we want to explore different ways. And one of the ways is to get together like this and to just uh, worship together. Obviously, we're not singing and, and praising today, um, but from next week, we'll be back with a worship team where it's important that we reconnect with God every single day. But there's something special about worshipping and praising our Heavenly Father as well together. So in this difficult time, I just want to share a, an encouraging Bible verse with you inspired me this week um, but also to inspire us through this lockdown period we don't know how long it's going to go on for and hopefully not too long but it's from um, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 you may want to look at it but it says call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know so I want to encourage you to keep praying during this lockdown period, because God will reveal things to us as Christians that he won't reveal to the world. OK, remember that we are the privileged people. He will only reveal things to us because we are the ones who love him and are in tune with him and want to hear from him. And when we're hearing from him, he will tell us and reveal things to us that he won't even reveal to governments. So you need to be tuning in. OK, you need to be listening into what God is saying. He won't reveal things to the world. He'll only reveal them to those who love him. And, um, and this is why we are the privileged people, because he won't reveal things to people who have turned their backs on him. And you need to get that into your head. Listen to him. Have eyes to see him. Have hearts to hear him and ears to hear him. Open to the things of God during this lockdown period. Yeah, don't switch off from him. Switch on to him. And this is the key part. Listen to what he is saying. Some of us are very good at just talking, talking, talking to God. Sometimes we need to look at me like sometimes that. we need to listen <laughs> to God as well and just have some space yeah. and allow him to reveal things to you. Yeah. And then he will share things with us that we do not know yet. Mm. Yeah? And he will start to reveal things to us. 
We just need to listen and then we'll have eyes to see what God is up to. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And um, I'm talking to prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Loving Lord, we thank you for this new year. Help us to embrace the miracle of your birth as we embrace yet another lockdown. Help us to embrace your wonder as we wonder about the future. And help us to embrace your power as we are so powerless today. And Lord, also help us to know that you are with us in every circumstance. And as the song says, day by day, O oh dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day, in 2021. I thank you that you never leave us nor abandon us. And even in the midst of darkness, your light still shines above it all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to ask Debbie now to read from Psalm 139, and I'm going to grab my coffee. <laughs> Give you a chance to find it. Psalm 139, starting from verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Yeah. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness as is light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And I love this verse. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How fast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed. And I uh, just want to share a New Year thought um, with you. Debbie and I are going to do this alternately. And um, it's lessons from Mary and Joseph that can help us in this new year. The first one. They can only imagine what was in store for them before, during and after Jesus' birth. But Mary and Joseph, they trusted God without reservation. What does that say to you today? They could only imagine how their great escape to Egypt to get away from <coughs> Herod would work out. But they believed God would protect them. What does that say to you today? They could only imagine what life would be like once they returned home, but they embraced life for what it was. What does that say to you today? They could only imagine how they would be viewed as Jesus' parents, but they carried out God's plan without complaint. What does that say to you today? They could only imagine how life would pan out for them as they raised the Son of the Saviour of the world, but they were determined to fulfil God's purpose for their lives. 
What does that say to you today? They could only imagine what Jesus would bring to their lives. But they were full of expectancy. Hope and joy overwhelmed them in such trying difficulties. What does that say to you today? And that last one's really, really quite poignant because they had some really, really difficult times. I mean, their whole situation was totally different to what we have, but there were very trying difficulties. And in the middle of all of that, they found hope. They found joy and they found expectancy, not only just of, of having birth, but expectancy of the things that were going to happen for the future. And we often sing that song, the best is yet to come. And I really believe that out of all of this tragedy and heartache and, and, and troubles that we've all gone through together, the best is yet to come because God says so. And we are his family and we draw close to him for the strength, the joy and the hope to face each day. And here comes the, the old thing, you know, there is only ever grace, strength, hope, and everything for today. If you run ahead of God, you run ahead of what he has for you. So live today expectant. Amen. And we don't need to imagine as well. We've got God with us, don't we? We don't need to imagine some of it. We need to imagine how it's all going to pan out. But we've got God with us, you know, so we can rest assured that he is with us and that he's going to look after us and bring us through all this. Having said goodbye to Christmas last week. Was it only last week? It was, yeah. Wow. So you made it. <laughs> Um, let's continue to welcome Jesus into our lives every day. And I'm going to ask Debbie to read to us again, this time from John 1, verse 1 to 13, uh, just to encourage us, but also that it's, it's also um, highlighting some of the bits I'm going to be sharing about with you in a moment in my word. Okay, John 1, 1 to 13. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the light to become children of God. Children born, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. So just a couple of minutes break. Grab your happy coffee, in case it's going cold. And just talk with the person maybe next to you, if there are other <laughs> people next to you. What has God been doing this week in your life, or last week as we just started a new week? <clears throat> what has God been doing in your life? What is God saying to you? How is God encouraging you? And to just keep... Um, to keep focus, so just have a little chat with your um, the people in the, in the in the room with you right now. And if you're on your own, just talk to yourself <laughs> and <laughs> encourage yourself right, if you're able to do that. So um, I've got Debbie, and um, yeah. Apologies to those of you who are online with us. I can't actually see the comments this morning uh, for some reason. So I can see that there are 15 of you on with us, and uh, a number of you have commented. So I just want to uh, welcome you. And, thank, and you. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's uh, it's it's really really weird when we look at things like this and we're looking at a camera and we just can't figure out what's happening, where we are, who we are, um, and who's watching. It's it's quite surreal. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining, and and we do pray that you know that God speaks to you in the middle of all of this. Yeah, it's been an interesting time this week, and. Um, God's been good and he's been looking after us and caring for us and guiding us and um, you know Debbie's still working at the church at the moment and um, yeah. so fortunately you know God's looking after her in that way but um, it's not easy for anybody but we're no. we keep going you know we're stuck indoors and um, it's not easy to get out these days but um, but of course we're still praying for everybody and um, <coughs> been praying specifically for this for Lynn this week she's still not feeling brilliant, brilliant this morning <coughs> Um, so we um, thank God for 
sustaining her while she still keeps mm. going. Mm. Um, and obviously for other people that we've been requested to pray for, and we're praying for Heidi's family, um, who are all HIV and if you positive. Do, and if you do want to Skype us or Zoom in with us or have a phone call with us, you know, feel free to do so. It'd be great to catch up with you and um, mm. and hear from you and just hear what, what's happening in your life, really. And even if it is yeah. just a 10 minute coffee thing over Zoom or something, you know, let us know and we can we can easily arrange that. And um, yeah, OK, I know we've just uh, finished Christmas, <laughs> but um, by the time lockdown <laughs> officially ends, it's probably going to be around about the Easter period, you know, beginning of April, by the way things are going. thought you were here to encourage us. Yeah, yeah, I know, time is zooming by. But I want to share a Good Friday thought with you to comfort us and to help us through lockdown, OK? Christmas is gone, Easter's on its way, and a Good Friday message brought forward to encourage us. And as I take you back to Christ's crucifixion, just focus that in your mind, Calvary right now. In your mind's eye, the hill, the three crosses, Christ in the middle. Christ is always in the centre of everything. Even in the stable, in the manger, he was in the middle of Mary and Joseph. On the cross, he was in the middle of the two thieves. He's always in the middle of everything. Make sure he's in the middle, in the centre of what you're doing in your lives. And I want to encourage you just to keep going. To allow the crucifixion, to allow you to keep going, especially as... Covid has brought much darkness to our lives over these last few months and it will do, it will continue to bring darkness to us as the weeks and months go by. So Debbie and I want to share a few thoughts with you about the darkness that came over Calvary but also to help us in our darkness that has come over us with, co uh, with coronavirus and the darkness that lockdown could bring to us too. And as Jesus, Jesus waited to be crucified it really was a dark time. It was a very dark time. And those darkest hours are what I want to focus on now or what we are going to focus on now. So Debbie, just share the first one, please. The darkest hours. When the disciples were too busy sleeping, three times Jesus wrote the disciples. His heart was breaking, his fears were mounting, and his knees were covered from the earth in the Garden of Gethsemane. Three times Jesus went to pray and pour out his heart in anguish to his father, but the disciples just slept. They fell into darkness, yet the real darkness was about to begin. The darkest hours Jesus betrayed not once, twice, but five times. Peter stood in the courtyard of the high priest and three times betrayed his Lord. Jesus came to save the world, yet Peter surrendered to the world. In an outright mockery of faithfulness, Peter saved his own skin. <clears throat> then Jude, Judas betrayed Jesus for just 30 pieces of silver, and then betrayed his Lord again with a kiss. While Jesus hung on a cross, Judas hung himself on a tree. The darkest hours where the Jews were driven by fear. Yes, driven by fear, the Jews crucified their Messiah, but driven by love and compassion, Jesus knelt in humility. The Jews shouted for the release of Barabbas and Pontius Pilate dutifully responded. A man who came to bring freedom for others was now a captive himself. The darkest hours as Jesus was crowned King of the Jews. Pilate washed his hands of Jesus and although the judge found Jesus not guilty, he refused to release him. The soldiers then arrested Jesus and then mocked him, tortured him and spat on him. They placed the crown of thorns on his head and paraded him through the streets of Jerusalem. The King of Glory was now the King of the Jews. The darkest hours at the foot of the cross. The soldiers preferred to play dice and laugh at the foot of the cross, rather than worship the Messiah at the foot of the cross. And gambling for his clothes, they gambled their lives away. The saviour of the world was in their presence, yet they were too busy playing games to notice. The darkest hours where Jesus was insulted and abused. One of the criminals on the cross then turned on Jesus as if somehow he was better than him. He aimed insults and abuse at Jesus and mocked his status. An innocent man was abused by the guilty. An innocent man just accepted his punishment. An innocent man simply said, 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The darkest hours where the disciples went missing. As Jesus' crucifixion was approaching, the disciples went into hiding, as did many of Jesus' close friends and followers. Fearing for their lives, they hid. Saving their own skin, they went into hiding. Bewildered and afraid, they deserted their Lord. When Jesus needed his friends the most, they went missing. The darkest hours, being in the dark. When darkness fell, it wasn't just for three hours from noon to 3 p.m. It was from the moment when Jesus was arrested right up until God removed him from the tomb. Those long, dark hours that would have seemed like an eternity brought even more darkness for those who loved him. People really were in the dark throughout Jesus' crucifixion. The darkest hours, yes, the light had now gone out. The midday sun had now turned black and daytime was now covered in darkness. The light had been extinguished along with the light of the world. Earth was now shaking, the ripped curtain was just about hanging and the crowd had now departed and only an eerie silence could be heard as the author of all living things had been brutally killed and now all living things trembled in fear. The darkest days when all hell broke out. Jesus, now Jesus was dead, defeated. The crowd had dispersed after cheering his crucifixion yet only a few days earlier. They were cheering his triumphal entry. God's final act of Jesus' humiliation was now complete. The moment when love vanished and all hell broke out. Jesus died in the dark, in the middle of the day when the sun was supposed to shine. But just as it was in the beginning, when the earth was dark, the earth once again plunged into darkness. But earlier in the week, it seemed like light had overcome the darkness when Jesus rode into Jerusalem as the Messiah, but now darkness had overwhelmed that light. But what significance is the darkness? This was the darkness of the father's grief as he watched his beloved son die. This was darkness piercing the heart of God. This was creation reacting to the evil done to its creator. In the darkness when Jesus hung on the cross, he was still alive yet in agony. He was too weak to even hold up his head. Too weak with his heavy eyes after a sleepless night. And as weakness came over him, he hung in the darkness. The darkest hours, we all have them. The darkest hours, we all experienced them in 2020, especially with COVID. The darkest hours that came through lockdown, clampdown and meltdown. <laughs> the darkest hours that came again last Monday. And yet, with another lockdown. The darkest hours of working from home or homeschooling or trying to entertain the children. The darkest hours where freedom yet again has been taken away from us. The darkest hours of closing the church yet again and not being able to meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ. The darkest hours when doing the basic things now takes a lot of thought. The darkest hours of constantly wearing our masks, washing our hands, keeping our distance really is now taking its toll. The darkest hours of cancelled holidays, work upheaval and everything put on hold. The darkest hours of loneliness and isolation and not being able to see family and friends. The darkest hours of what is acceptable and what is illegal and there's confusion even this week about what people can do and how far they can travel. The darkest hours of not knowing when Covid will ever end and when life gets back to normality. In the darkest hours, Jesus faced his destiny with eyes wide open. In the darkest hours, Jesus faced his accusers with eyes wide open. In the darkest hours, Jesus faced his cross with eyes wide open. Eyes that pierced the hearts of every soldier and every bystander. In the darkest hours of Good Friday, Jesus' eyes were focused. And in his final moments, Jesus embraced his death with eyes wide open. What does the dark Good Friday message say to us today? It says to me, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. John 1 verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, Debbie read it earlier, and the darkness can never extinguish it. John 1 verse 5. And because Jesus overcame darkness and he rose again, it means we can also overcome darkness 
because above the darkness the spirit of God hovers isn't that good yeah. and because it hovers we can face our problems with eyes wide open like Jesus did and not cower away in despair mm -hmm. in other words he will be with us we will not be defeated because Jesus is alive amen, amen. Amen. Darkness is a theme throughout the crucifixion. But remember, it was not the devil who controlled it. Even on the day when all hell broke out, it was God who stopped the sunlight, not the devil. Mm. So whatever comes your way in 2021, whatever darkness or whatever dark days you face, continue putting your faith in a God who is not intimidated by darkness. No, right. Psalm 139 verse 12 says, and Debbie read it earlier, but even in darkness... I cannot hide from you. To you, God, that is, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. That's David saying that. Even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. Mm. To you, O Lord, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. That's incredible, isn't mm. it? Yes. We just see it as dark and light. Mm. God sees it as one. Wow. And the same with our problems. He can help us through our darkness. Because God is above the darkness. God is not threatened by your problems, however dark they may be. Darkness does not intimidate God, so don't let it intimidate you either. Just focus back on the Resurrection Sunday. That beautiful day, that wonderful day that every Christian would love to have been yeah. at. Early that morning on Resurrection Sunday, it was still dark. But the stone was now rolled away. It was dark, yet Jesus brought light. It was dark, but Jesus had won. Victory was achieved in darkness. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Victory was achieved in darkness. So be encouraged as we go through this new year. Your darkness will eventually disappear because victory is just over the horizon. So watch out for your victory in the darkness in 2021. I don't know about you, I've always wondered when daylight returned after Christ's crucifixion. Did it return that day or after Jesus was taken down from the cross? Did daylight return that afternoon or the following morning? Was it dark when they placed Jesus in the tomb? Nobody really knows. But one thing for sure, on Resurrection Day, the light of the world brought light to the world. Yes. We've had a lot of darkest hours yeah. in 2020 and there'll be more to come, sadly. But in 2021, be assured... The light of the world will guide your every step. Amen. So be encouraged. Anything to add, Debbie? Or no, I just think you know it's so easy to focus on the darkness because, particularly like winter months, it is dark. It, it sort of. I remember getting up early in December and then sort of going to work in the dark and then coming back in the dark, and in between that, it just seems to be yeah. it gone. You know no, what I mean? Yeah. And I think you know so often we. We focus on the wrong things because they're the things that are difficult, mm. you know. Um, but but sometimes, you know, when you focus and you're in the darkness, you know, and you just see like that little flicker of light in the darkness, it's the one thing you're drawn to. And I think that's it. You draw yourself back into into God and to, to the light uh, to, to, for protection, but also to guide the way through. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, you probably have, but slowly it's getting a bit lighter in the it evenings. Is. You know, we half three, I think, a few weeks ago, it was pretty dark. Mm. But now, I think it's half four, quarter to five, it's beginning to get darker. Mm. And so it's getting lighter. And uh, I want that to be an encouragement to you. The days are getting lighter. Mm. Our problems are going to get lighter. <laughs> and as we come through all this stuff, you know, we can see a way through this. So let the light guide you and don't be put off by the darkness. No, it's fine. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for being with us in this shorter service. Keep in contact with us. Thank you for your love, your support, your encouragement. And yeah. uh, we just you really, know, really blessed by that. And I'm going to hand over to Debbie, who's going to close in prayer for us. Going to close in prayer. But, <clears throat> but I have to, before I do, I have to show you, like Steve's had his pastor, pastor, by, pastor powered by coffee and Holy Spirit. Well, I can't go without showing you this. Hopefully you can all That's see better. this. <laughs> A bit higher, please. Mm. So this is my wonderful uh, Highland cow mask. And as for many of you know, that I absolutely love my cows. Uh, so this is something that it's a simple little thing, but it brings such joy uh, because they're things that I love. And so 
you know, we've all got little things that sometimes we just need to hold on to. And in this thing, God is even bigger than all our little things. So we need to hold on to him in everything. So let, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in the middle of all the darkness, even in the middle of everything that we are facing through COVID, through isolation, through loneliness, through mental health issues, to uh, actual health issues, to situations that are overwhelming us in work, whatever it may be, Lord, we thank you that you can shine a light and do shine a light into all of those areas, Lord. We thank you that you are the hope. You are the one that gives us all that we need yes. day by day by day, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that even when everything just feels really heavy, that, Lord, we can just draw close to you. That, Lord, we can find our safe place and we can shelter underneath your arms, as it were. That, Lord, you know, as the scripture says, that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. We will soar on the wings like eagles. And Father, I pray for many of us this morning, Lord, that I know we're not soaring because life is tough. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us the grace and the strength, Lord, to just step out into new things with you. Mm. That, Lord, we will learn to soar because of who you are, not because of our circumstances and situations. That even in the circumstances and situations, we will still learn to soar with you. That, Lord, your presence will come close to us. The Lord, when we feel that we are isolated, when we feel we're alone, I pray, Lord, that you would just lavish us, Lord, with your presence. Yes, Lord. That, Lord, your Holy Spirit would come into every single area of our houses, Lord. Replace, Lord, your seal upon the door frames of every household that's watching this morning. That, Lord, your Holy Spirit will protect, encourage and, and nurture each of us, Lord. The Lord, we will sense your Holy Spirit in every place that we go while we are contained into our homes. Father, we pray for protection for those of us that are still having to work. Lord, it's, it's a challenge and it's a, a, a challenge for a homeschool, homeschooling and everything else that is involved in that. And I pray, Lord, for the parents who are nurturing their young children and, and the, the challenges that faces. Lord, I pray that you would give them an abundance of grace, that you would give them a strength that they would never have thought they would have, and that, Lord, you alone would be the centre of everything that each of us does. So, Lord, as we go into a new week, we will look at it and we'll say, yeah, same old, same old. But, Lord, I pray that our eyes will be different. We will see new things in you as we look to the light rather than the darkness. And so, Father, we thank you for being with us. We ask, Lord, for your love to surround us for the gifts that we receive daily lord that we will just use them for your glory mm -hmm. and that lord we continue to reach out to each other as a family yes and that you would be glorified lord in and through us in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. just one final thing as david's prayed i felt god share say to me share um something extra and i've got some um cuttlefish um with me right now i bought it um i didn't buy it i found it on the beach in lime regis uh back last year and, and the reason i want to show it is because if you've been in our conservatory i've got so many holiday things <laughs> scattered all around from hats to um sort of things memorabilia and everything else around the conservatory and i bought this just to tie in with my holiday things and my holiday theme and the reason i got this was because back in the 80s when i was in the 90s when i was working in the memorial trade, making headstones and engraving headstones you know, in marble and granite. When we had finished writing the letters on the granite, this is only on granite, we would then paint the letters black and then we would put gold leaf into, particularly on the black memorials, um, into the letters so that when it was all rubbed off, the gold leaf would shine out, the letters would shine out. And the way you got the paint and the gold leaf off the granite was through cuttlefish, because when you use this with water, it doesn't scratch. It's amazing. You just rub it over the granite, over the letters, all the rubbish disappears, no scratches, and the light shines out, and all the letters shine out. And I want to be encouragement to you, as God works in your life this year, he's going to remove some of the dirt, some of the rubbish, some of the muck. 
you're not going to have any scratches left on you. God's going to work his wonder and you will shine out like those letters do on a gold, on a black piece of granite. Go around a cemetery, have a look one day and see the difference it makes with the gold leaf coming out. And uh, God wants to do that in your life, to shine out and to bring blessing into other people's lives. As you shine out, people will be affected. So don't live in the darkness, live in the light, shine for the glory of God. Thank you for watching us. God bless you and we'll catch you in the church next Sunday. Thank you.